What's going on, Gemini Knights? Gem Mint here with the Justice League Snyder Cut dropping this week. I thought it would be a perfect time to do every Justice League Omnibus release so far, which acts like a video checklist where we'll look at the books, how much they cost, what they collect, and we'll take a look at some of the artwork as well. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe and that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Plus, we're doing a giveaway once we hit 125,000 subscribers where we're giving away this Spider-Man Premium format by Sideshow. Stay tuned till the end of the video and I'll tell you how to enter. First of all, I'm going to mention the cover price on each one of these, but don't go paying retail or more than cover price. Check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, who sells them up to 50% off. Great packaging, fast shipping, and excellent customer service. They also have a bargain bin where you can get books up to 90% off. Plus, if you mention this channel in the memo at checkout for your first order, your next order will have free shipping if you're in the United States. So check out Cheap Graphic Novels for any of these books that are still in print. All right, guys, let's start off in the beginning. We're going to jump into the Silver Age. All right, here we go. The Justice League of America, Silver Age Omnibus, Volume 1 and Volume 2. You have dust jacket covers by Darwin Cook. The Volume 1 dust jacket is actually a custom dust jacket that I had made because the original one didn't match all the later Silver Age, Golden Age, and Bronze Age volumes. So I had it made to match the spines, and they ended up including their own Darwin Cook cover. So uh, as I mentioned, here are the spines for the Silver Age Omnibus, Volume 1 and 2. And here is what the back of the books look like. So these Omnibus had cover prices of $100. Volume 1 will collect the Justice League's first appearance in Brave and the Bull issue 28. It also collects issues 29 and 30. Then you have Justice League of America 1 through 30, which is continued in Volume 2 to collect issues 31 through 76. Volume 2 also includes material from Mystery of Space issue 75. Now all of the DC Omnibus that contain classic material tend to have this all black type of hardcover. They don't typically do wraparound covers or graphic art, so you just get like an embossed look on these plain black hardcovers. So let's just flip through Volume 1 to get an idea of what the Justice League looked like in the Silver Age. You can see the team had Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Adam, Aquaman, Superman, Batman, Martian Manhunter, and The Flash. You had art by Mike Sikowski and Bernard Sachs with Joe Giella and Murphy Anderson. Cover art was not for this dust jacket. It was Brave and the Bull 28, if I recall. So the books do contain table of contents, which I always feel are super helpful. Some of the modern books uh, don't contain those. We do get an introduction here. That's by Roy Thomas, who does a ton of introductions for Marvel and DC Omnibus. We got a forward here by Marv. Wolfman, and then here is Brave and the Bull 28 with the Justice League against Starro. So let's just flip through here, like I said, and we'll take a look at the Justice League in the Silver Age. Classic looking Batman. There goes Starro. Starro was brought back recently in comics during the uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal, so I thought that was a really cool throwback to add in. DC doing a really good job of cranking out this classic material. Although it's not everybody's bag, I think that it's you know cool to have all this history on the shelves. And anytime you want to reference any of these issues, they're all there. So they're cranking out all the Golden Age, Silver Age, and Bronze Age omnibus for sure. All right, guys, out of the 60s, let's move into the 70s and look at the Bronze Age of the Justice League. And here we have the covers for the Bronze Age omnibus volumes 1 and 2. I love the artwork by Carl Kershaw, and as of right now, Volume 3 has been solicited. So these are the only two volumes out at the time of recording, but there is a third one coming. Here are the spines, very similar to the Silver Age, except they have a different color, more of a bronze color to them. Volume 1 has a cover price of $100, but Volume 2 did see a price increase, $125. Now these include Justice League of America 77 through 113, then it continues with 114 through 146. And like I said with the Silver Age books, you just get that all black hardcover with the embossed Justice League of America, the Bronze Age Omnibus for both volumes. All right, here we go, nice cover page. Here you have your credits. This one's got writers like Danny O'Neill, Mike Frederick, Len Wein. You have art by Dick Dillon, Neil Adams, Murphy Anderson, and more. Here's your table of contents.
and let's flip through we can see how the team has evolved how the art style has improved you can see already bigger paneling you have more word bubbles it seems like less narration and more talking from the characters Green Arrow still there but then you see Hawkman has been introduced this nice double page spread here moving along in the decades we're gonna jump into the late 80s with the Justice League International Omnibus all right next up we have the Justice League International volumes 1 and 2 and this is basically the Justice League going from the Bronze Age to the Copper Age you're talking about late 80s to 90s they have great cover art by Mark McGuire and they have these similar spines that match which as omnibus collectors we always appreciate both of them have wraparound dust jackets where you can see the artwork continues on the back and similar to the bronze age volume one was one hundred dollars volume two one hundred and twenty five and this is going to collect justice league one through six justice league international seven through twenty five which is was renamed justice league of america twenty six through thirty another rename uh, we have annual one then justice league international annuals two and three Justice League Europe 1 through 6 and Suicide Squad 13. Then moving over to Volume 2, it collects Justice League America 31 through 50, Justice League Europe 7 through 25, Justice League International Special 1, Annual 4, Justice League Europe Annual 1, and Justice League International Quarterly Number 1. The hardcover for Volume 1 has that Mark McGuire artwork all spread out on the actual book. That looks great. All of these different characters. And the hardcover for Volume 2 features artwork from a splash page ripped right out of the story. Now let's flip through Volume 1, and again, we'll take a look at the evolution of the Justice League into the 90s. Here we have our credits. Keith Giffen, J.M. DeMattis, Kevin McGuire, Al Gordon. J.M. DeMattis with the introduction. And then here we have Issue 1, Guy Gardner, my favorite Green Lantern. And probably my favorite era of comics because I grew up in the 90s. I wasn't reading Justice League though in the 90s. I was more into Spider-Man and X-Men and Spawn. But later on in life I would uh, go back and get into the DC books as well. Some Doctor Fate here. We could already see the evolution of Batman. Pretty prominent from like those Adam West days. You got Blue Beetle here. Even the Joker we've seen uh, in the earlier Omnis as well. Nice uh, double page spread here. Our next book is going to kind of jump around a lot. It starts in the late 80s, it ends in the early 2000s, but we're going to take a look at the Justice League Detroit era omnibus and take a look at the Detroit based team. All right, the Justice League Detroit era omnibus kind of throws off my chronological order here because this takes every appearance of the Detroit version of the team, stuff that goes from the 80s to the early 2000s. So here's the front of the dust jacket, and I do like how they made the spine match with the uh, Justice League International omnis. Here's the back, $125 cover price. It collects Justice League of America 233 through 239, plus 241 through 261, Justice League of America Annual 2 and 3, JLA Classified 22 through 25, uh, then JSA Classified 14 through 16, DC Retroactive, JLA, the 80s issue 1, and Infinity Inc. 19. Has the same image on the actual hardcover, except it's clean, no spine obstructing the artwork, and nothing on the back here, so you get to see the artwork in its entirety. Here goes our interior cover. And the dust jacket artist, you have Jose Luis Garcia Lopez with Patricia Mulvihill. Uh, but writers like Jerry Conway, again, J.M. DeMattis, Steve Englehart, you had pencilers like Chuck Patton, Luke McDonald, George Tuska. Uh, you had inkers like Bill Anderson, Mike McClan, Bill Ray. Jerry Conway with an introduction. And then jumping into the Detroit era. So like I said, it's going to start off uh, in the 80s. And as you move through this book, it'll take uh, stories from later on. So like I said, kind of messing up my chronological order of the Omnis here. But this is kind of like a compilation omnibus for just Justice League during this era. We have more uh, modern stuff. Mike Zek doing the cover. And you can tell like this is modern comics here. 
Moving on into the early 2000s, we're going to jump into the JLA Omnibus by Grant Morrison, one of comic books' most prolific writers. Moving even further into modern comics, we have JLA by Grant Morrison. Amazing artwork here by Howard Porter and John Dell. Here is the spine in the back of the omnibus. This book did have a $150 cover price, and this collected Grant Morrison's run on JLA with artists Howard Porter and John Dell with Pat Garay, and what seems like one of his favorite artists to work with, Frank Quietly. All right, being that this is more modern material, DC gives the nice wraparound cover treatment here, none of that all black look. So two images really on the front and on the back. This takes us out of the era of the blue Superman and brings us into a whole new era of Justice League. Now see with these modern books, they don't tend to include tables of contents, but you can see the issues that it collects by looking in here in, in one of the front pages. So it collects some of the 1 million issues like Superman, DC 1 million, Detective Comics, Green Lantern 1 million, then goes into JLA 1 through 17, 22 through 26, 18 through 31, 34, uh, then 36 through 41 with issue 1 million, plus JLA Classified 1 through 3, JLA Earth 2, Secret Files, and Origins number 1, plus it's got the JLA Wildcats issue, JLA Z issue 2, and then some more 1 millions, Martian Manhunter, Secret Origins, Starman, Superman, Man of Tomorrow, and etc. So like I said, out of the 90s, into the early 2000s, explosive artwork. You can see Aquaman here, Batman jumping out on the page. Grant Morrison, one of the most prolific writers in the industry, known for having his complicated storylines. But this is him kind of... Uh, doing his own thing with Justice League, breaking away from what was going on with the league prior and establishing his own era of Justice League. And of course, it wouldn't be a Justice League video without Darkseid. We're going to end this one with the most recent, chronologically, Justice League omnibus with the Darkseid War Saga omnibus by Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok. Now, as of this recording, the Justice League New 52 Omnibus has been solicited, but it's not out yet. So the last one we're going to take a look at is Justice League The Dark Side War Saga Omnibus. You can see this has a great team of Jeff Johns with Jason Fabuk. Yeah, Brad Anderson and Francis Manipal. And this is more of a Justice League event omnibus. So this collects Justice League issues 40 through 50. The Dark Side War Special 1, Divergence 1, and all six Dark Side War one shot tie ins, and only had a $75 cover price. It does have this Dark Side wraparound cover. Again, with the more modern material, they tend to do that. And then jumping into the omnibus, you have your cover sheet, you have your credits here, you have your synopsis, the issues that's collected, and then it just jumps right into the prologue, which is part one. So Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok, I mean, they're some of the best writers and artists in the game right now, so you can't go wrong when they team up and do a book like this. Uh, they went on to do Three Jokers afterwards, which actually, now that I think about it, I believe there was a plot hole in this storyline with Batman in the Mobius chair that is kind of one of the reasons why fans didn't like Three Jokers as much as uh, they should have, since it kind of didn't really play off of what how this story ended and then being a modern omni you do get some bonus material on the back here which is always cool to have i tried not to make this video too long so that we can showcase every book and in case you missed it or you skipped around there are two justice league omnibuses that have been solicited that are not out yet the Bronze Age Omnibus Volume 3, and the Justice League New 52 Omnibus. Like I said, we're doing a big giveaway for our next subscriber milestone of 125,000, where we're gonna give away this Spider-Man Premium Format exclusive by Sideshow Collectibles. All you gotta do is be subscribed to this channel and comment on this video and any other video where I promoted this giveaway. Once we hit the milestone, we'll go live, we'll pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. You can comment what your favorite era of Justice League is, or let me know what you think about the Snyder Cut that's coming out this Thursday. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, but don't go anywhere. Check out my other Every Omnibus series in the playlist to the left, and stay minty fresh. Peace.